Welcome everyone. My name is Jan Ondo. I'm going to give you a short introduction to Shiny Biomod, a R application designed to run Biomod with a graphical user interface. I guess now you must be more familiar with Biomod thanks to previous presentations from Wilfred, Damia, and Maya. So I'll spare you with further technical details but I'm just going to show you how you could perform every step of the modeling process without having deep programming knowledge. So make yourself comfortable and let's start. So what is Shiny Biomod? Basically it's our application featuring Biomod 2 with Shiny. Biomod 2 provides a wide range of options to fit and combine several models. To assess quality and certainties associated to your model and predict environmental stability or the species range in time and space. On the other end, Shiny is a web application package that provides an appealing graphical user interface, which is specially designed to avoid people to be too much concerned with script coding in Biomod 2. I also incorporated additional tools to deal with common issues met in species distribution modeling. For example, it's possible to explore relationships among environmental factors. You can perform principal component analysis and correlation analysis. This helps you to make sure to select the factors that most influence the ecological conditions of your study area and exclude less important or redundant ones. In general, occurrence records are not evenly sampled across your study region, and some areas are overly sampled compared to others. This can potentially cause biases in model estimates. So I added a tool to spatially filter occurrence records to help even out the sampling across the region. For better visualization of your data, the application uses one of the most popular JavaScript libraries, Leaflet, which allow you to interact with the maps that you have uploaded or created. Finally, we are currently working on including a tool to report everything you've done during the session, which means documenting datasets used, analysis performed at each step of the process. It's an important feature, motivated by recent scientific publications, encouraging reproducibility, transparency, and sharing knowledge in academic research. So how does it work? The application follows a general framework that you must already know if you watch Wilfried's video. This framework can be distinguished in five main steps. The context of the study, the data, the model fitting, the model assessment, and predictions. The first step can't really be implemented within an application, but it's the most important one. You must design the main objectives of your research and formulate hypotheses about the distribution of your species. All subsequent steps should ideally match those objectives and hypotheses. Once you have set up your objectives, you need to get your data ready. Then comes the core of the process, the model fitting. Make sure to choose appropriate algorithms to fit plausible responses between species and environmental gradients and to account for potential sampling issue. Then check the quality of your model and if you're happy with it, you can step to the predictions stage. Shiny Biomod extends the ability of Biomod to deal with common issues encountered when modeling species distribution, which results in better understanding how different modeling approaches can affect our ability to detect shifts in species ranges. Species distribution modeling comprises several steps which require knowledge in programming, statistics, and of course, biology, biogeography, and ecology of species. 
and shiny biomods provide an easy to use interface to facilitate this process, but also to ensure reproducibility and transparency of your research. But enough talking. I think it's time for me to show you how it looks like. So let's start by opening the application in R Studio. Okay, here we go. This is the home page of the application with a quick introduction. And you can have a look at the general workflow scheme. All right, you only have two tabs, settings and data upload. In settings, we're going to start by setting our working directory. This is really important because it is where you're going to save everything you've done during the session. So you're going to save your results. In data uploading, you can upload your occurrence records or your environmental data. Let's upload our occurrence records. Okay, so make sure all the fields are set appropriately. Okay, select your species and click. Here it is, it's the quick description of your data. You can have more information there. All right. And now let's have a look at the distribution of your occurrence records. Okay, this is an interactive map and on the right hand side panel, you just need to select your data set, your species, and here you go. Just zoom in and drag the map and check it out. Okay, so uploaded your occurrence records trigger a new tab called data processing where you can filter those records or defining a background area. We're going to filter our records, though there is another interactive map and this is a description of the module. Okay, select your data set, your species, and a minimum distance between your points. Okay, once you're ready, click on filter. Here we go. So the red dots are deleted records and the green one are selected one. Okay, so this is the outputs of the analysis and you can save the spatially filtered records. All right, now let's upload our environmental data. You just need to go to the folder containing your raster layers. Okay. Click OK and then load your rasters. Here it is. Then you can change the color palette for better visualization and select the number of layers to be displayed. Okay, so uploading your environmental data sets trigger two other tabs, data exploration and data preparation. In data exploration, you can do a PCA or a correlation analysis. Let's do a PCA. Here we go. So select your study area, your environmental variables, and set up your parameters. OK, then run the PCA. OK, this is the output of the PCA, so it's a bar plot showing the importance of variable and each axis selected. In this tab, you can have a look at the correlation between your variable in the covariance plot. So you have uploaded your occurrence and your environmental data. Now it's time to extract information at occurrence locations. Okay, so you're going to extract environmental values at occurrence locations now. It's down and you can have a look at your 
raster layers as well and make sure you selected the one you wanted okay don't forget to save the output so it's triggered the main important part of shiny biomod which is biomod 2 and the formatting stage but i'm not going to show you what's going on there i think you already know if you watched the video from damien so i'm going to show you the result of the model are already run before so i'm just going to the working directory where there are stores and the application recognizes immediately this working directory and proposes evaluation and projection tabs in evaluation let's have a look at the performance matrix of the model are run check the modeling and this is the output so it's able with the evaluation matrix value and a bar plot with the variable importance okay let's have a look at the relationship between species and environmental gradients that my models have fitted here it goes so make sure that the response fitted is plausible and makes sense okay let's have a look at the projection tab quickly i'm going to show you where you can do handsome predictions but i'm going to show you uh, another tab where you can convert your stability maps into binary maps there's two main options you can do it manually by selecting a threshold or selecting a matrix or several different metrics here we go and then convert it this is the output maps with different results because i use different metrics and this is a table showing the threshold found okay i can select now different outputs and save the results for later visualization now let's go to the projection map tab and this is the output of uh, my modeling my handsome modeling i'm going to add occurrence points on it and as you can see it fits pretty well the distribution of my points now let's have a look at the binary maps okay so this is the binary maps um, resulted from the threshold used for maximizing sensitivity and specificity and this is another threshold where i use the mean probability so shiny biomod is designed to help the users to optimize the modeling process for best results and high efficiency that's why new tabs and tools appear dynamically according to the set of information entered by the user when he moves along the workflow. The objective was to spare the user with over mailing information that can lead to confusion and time wasted, but also to avoid any easy to make but inaccurate or inefficient model. So what's next? The plan is to add an API to carry occurrence records from the global online biodiversity database JBIF. Then adding a cleaning step to remove non-desired or suspicious records. Shiny Biomod is still under development, but it should be available by July or August 2020, hopefully. I hope you enjoyed this journey across the Biomod universe and learned a lot about species distribution modeling. Thank you for listening.